key changes to the MDR relevant to my perspective are those three. So there's going to be much more stringent uh, clinical evidence and documentation required, both prior to approval and in uh, follow-up. There's going to be increased notified body authority and involvement and much more rigorous surveillance uh, through the market. All that means, and Daniel, who I'm sorry isn't here, gave me these numbers in his opinion, 50% of device companies will probably call it a day along with their uh, products. Those bigger device companies who are able to shoulder the burden of all this will reduce their portfolio. All those nice little niche devices we all love will disappear and reduce portfolio by probably 50%, but we'll hear later. And any innovative high-risk medical devices receiving the CE mark will probably fall by about 70%. So, you know, when we're, we're talking about any new regulation or existing regulation, the, simplistically, this is kind of what we're looking for. We're looking for regulations that are reasonable, the requirements aren't overly burdensome, they are practical, they make sense, and there's some degree of, of uh, discussion that's, that's possible regarding those requirements, that they lead to predictable approval uh, timelines. Uh, that's really important to us. And then overall, we want a structure that will support innovation, but also an ability to bring safe and effective products to market in an efficient uh, manner. And usually that takes a lot of collaboration uh, with the various regulatory agencies. So just in terms of the scale of the regulation, it's roughly doubled in size, which makes it obviously by definition a lot more complex. Um, but in addition, it's now a regulation rather than a directive. So previously, the, the current regulation as a directive means that each individual country takes it and it amends it and then over time bakes it into their own regulations as opposed to a regulation which out of the gate everybody just must adopt. So it's not as flexible, you take it, you work with it, uh, as opposed to being able to mold it to, to what you believe is necessary in your, in your jurisdiction. We all know that the notified bodies um, are diminishing in their numbers. Uh, there's only, there was 83, um, I think like two years ago, at the moment we are at around 50, and uh, now 47 of those have applied. Um, if you look at the timelines again, uh, 47 have applied. That's good news uh, because it was only 32 last year. Um, not all of them will be designated. Not all of them were, uh, will be able to uh, do the assessments on their MDR. Currently, there's only one. And the time remaining for the conformity assessments will very likely be way too short. Uh, my uh, prediction is that it will have a devastating impact on the industry. And uh, my conclusions are that, again, this is the most impactful, uh, impactful piece of legislation to hit the industry. Um, CE marking in time will be almost impossible for many of the manufacturers. Their economic burden is unbearable. And uh, again, in alignment with the Swiss and German authorities, I believe that 50% of the devices will be withdrawn. 30% of the manufacturers will go down. And the patients certainly might be at risk. And I add this year that the products remaining on the market will certainly become more expensive because somebody has to pay for all this that we have to go through right now. So, I'm sorry, but the MDR will be the most disruptive force in European healthcare since World War II. <laughs> this new MDR will affect everybody. It affects health systems, it affects hospitals, it affects governments, doctors, investors, and most of all, as Guido said, patients. In the short term, this is going to endanger patients. In fact, people will die. You will read about it in your local newspapers. There will be deaths due to this new policy. European patients will experience diminished quality of care at a higher cost. Innovation will be cut by 70% in Europe. Half a million products have to go through recertification. There's 80,000 from one U.S. company alone, which will go unnamed. So these companies, these large companies particularly, they're going to call their product lines. So all the products that are not profitable or that are used once or twice a year, albeit maybe to save somebody's life, they will no longer be available. So that's 200,000 products that are going to be gone from hospitals in Europe. 50% of these companies will close or move to Asia and the US. The system will crash. I'll tell you why. 
As you heard, when we started this process, we had 88 notified bodies. We now have 57. Only 47 of those are applying for the MDR. Only one to date has MDR certification. And as we heard, it's a British one. We heard 30% of medical device companies are going to go bankrupt in Europe. Um, the existing medical device manufacturer will cut their product portfolio by 50%. And it could be a product you use twice a year that saves a life, but you won't have it. The number of uh, medical devices receiving CDMARC that are innovative will drop by 70%. Those will be in Asia and the US. CDMARC lead time approval will at least double. An estimated 12 to 17 billion additional costs for manufacturers. It's a huge impact to the healthcare systems and quality of care. An increase of lack of medical experts, regulatory medical experts on all sides. But you know, as Darwin said, it's not the strongest or even the smartest. It's the one who can adapt who will survive. Thank you for your time and attention, and don't shoot the messengers. Thank you. And if the industry can, in a united way, not divide and rule is the opposite way, but if you, in a united way, can come together and communicate the big three changes you want to this regulation, not that you can get it, remove it, but the big three changes to regulation, it will be heard. Well, I think the first thing is that while you're putting in a, a new system of MDR for new innovative devices, including the 500,000 that are already there, is just madness in a short period of time. So you stop the historic and you start with the today. Or give it 10 years to be able to okay. come into compliance. So a different, so, so a different pathway <coughs> then for existing versus new, so you don't totally dry up the new. You saw her bottleneck fixture. I mean, it's, it's, that's not exaggerated. Okay, so that's one thing. So you kind of give a much longer grace period for the existing and you focus on the new aim. Yeah, I would just say, uh, just extending the timeline to, to actually, for these regulations to kick in, because clearly we don't have the regulatory bodies well, one ready. one unified body that's going to leave so, the EU. Exactly. So. I mean, I would ask for a category for innovation, because there is no category yeah, because it's a competitive innovation. disadvantage, isn't it? What you're saying is the geopolitics are, they're all going to go to the States, <clears throat> they're all going to go to China, they're all going to go to Japan. And all the brain Someone's brain that goes with the it. EU that, so, that you make, so you make a competitive advantage point. Do you want to be the basket case of innovation for medical device? That's, okay, that's asked too. Well, how do you do that? Well, I think you, you create a, a new category that's for innovative, just like what the U.S. has done, actually. Oh, you just copy the U.S.? Well, no, you make a breakthrough. You make a breakthrough. You, first of all, you let them prove safety, and even make safety harder to prove. That's fine. But then once it's safe, let them charge for the product, at least in a clinical trial, and set, okay. trial setting, to but, prove it's, that it works and that it's cost effective. And so we've got grandfathering old devices, Timelines extended to reflect the fact that nothing's prepared to be able to do any of this, and an innovation track that, that allows device innovation to be fast tracked where safety has been proven. That's my takeaway from the session. Can I just say that it, it looks shambolic from a, just a sheer that the, actually you could argue the whole thing should be on, put on hold before the infrastructure is in place? How can you run a process where the database isn't ready, the notified bodies aren't there, the specs haven't been done? Someone's just got to give, give an, a reality check now and go back to the bureaucrats and say your bureaucracy's not there.